I want to tell you a story about a patient of mine from a few years ago. So my clients brought their dog in to see me because they'd noticed a very large mass growing in this dog's neck. This middle-aged dog had no other problems, um, but it, it was concerning. Clearly, big masses are not normal. We did some cytology, so to try and find out what that problem was, and it came back as a melanoma. Now, melanomas in this area can potentially be cured if we can remove them completely. So we went to surgery, and I remember this surgery being really, really challenging. It was a nasty tumour. It had grown around a lot of the vessels, the nerves. You can appreciate there's quite a lot of important things that are in the neck that you don't want to be cutting. So it was a pretty challenging surgery. And unsurprisingly, when we got the result back from the pathologist, not only was the mass nastier than expected, it actually was a different type to what we thought. It was a malignant thyroid carcinoma, so a, a tumour of the thyroid gland, which are really nasty, aggressive variations. Um, it was also completely, um, incompletely, I should say, resected. So there was a uh, tumour cell still left in the dog, and also there were tumour cells found within the blood vessel. So without a doubt, this tumour was not only aggressive locally, it had spread to the rest of the body, and the life expectancy of this dog was no more than about three months. Now, four years later, I went on a home visit to euthanize this dog for completely unrelated old age issues. And I'll talk about why this dog was cured of their cancer in just a little bit. But here's the thing, and this is the lesson that I took away from this, is that if the owner had started any supplements, if they'd tried any alternative treatments or remedies, you know, they'd probably been hit by multiple Facebook ads for, for the latest cancer miracle cure. If I had actually given any long-term treatment, started any chemotherapy or just palliative care, then it would actually have been very easy and completely understandable to credit that intervention with the remission and the cure from cancer that this dog experienced, when the reality is that whatever we had done would have had no bearing on this dog's recovery because it recovered without any treatment at all. And this is really the, the danger or, or the challenge with trying to interpret some of the stories that we hear about different treatment modalities, trying to kind of break down actually what is making a difference to our pets to either keep them healthy in the first place or to cure them or relieve their symptoms or whatever it is that we are giving an intervention, um, you know, coming up with a treatment plan, whatever it is that we're trying to, to achieve. And, and there's a huge number of different reasons why this can be challenging and why we can overinterpret or we can um, misattribute uh, a, particular, uh, a, a particular cure or anything like that. Now, the first one, I guess, is a really important one. And this is something called caregiver placebo. So the placebo effect is when we, um, as, as people, is we, we take a medication or we take a, a sugar pill, if you like. There's no way it can result in any change in the condition that we are experiencing, but we believe that it is going to make a difference. And so actually we do feel better as a result. So there is a positive effect to the placebo effect. Now, our pets can't know that when we administer a treatment, when we go and take them for, um, I don't know, chiropractic care or, or anything like that, they don't know that that is supposed to be making them better. So they can't then feel better as a, as a result of that belief. But we absolutely can because we are spending money on a particular supplement, on a particular treatment, on a particular intervention. We are so invested in our pets. So understandably, we want them to feel better, to get better. And so we can develop something called caregiver placebo, which is where we see an improvement even when one isn't present. And this is one big problem with anecdotes or, or testimonials, basically people's stories of what's happened to them. It may well be that there actually wasn't any improvement. Now clearly that wasn't the case in this dog because they were cured of their cancer or certainly their cancer didn't um, progress in the way that we expected uh, and, and in the end um, they survived their cancer because it was something else that, that got them just because they were very old by the time they got to, um, to this stage. Um, the other big issue is that correlation and causation are two very different things. So it's not unusual for me to hear um, 
that we've got a, a particular problem in a dog. We start multiple different um, treatments, ultimately with many chronic conditions, especially we try uh, and come up with a multimodal treatment plan, which means we tackle a disease from all kinds of different angles. So that can be diet, it can be supplementation, it can be lifestyle, it can absolutely be pharmaceuticals. It can be a whole number of different things. Uh, and very often I have owners attribute the improvement to one particular aspect of that treatment plan when the reality is is that there's absolutely no way we can know if one of those uh, one of those treatments was more effective than all the others if the others were useless and only one was being effective when in all likelihood it was actually a combination of all of them so correlation really doesn't equal causation the next problem especially when we're trying to decide what the best course of action is uh, and again this is a problem you know this dog had um, had a cancer it'd be very easy for this owner to have jumped on social media to have joined a facebook group and to have come across all of this different advice and the problem here as well as what we've just discussed is also the dunning kruger effect so this is where ultimately people don't know what they don't know you know they know enough to think that they're right and to think that they are absolutely unquestionably right but they don't know enough to know that actually they are wrong so the dunning kruger effect is the fact is is a, a phenomenon i guess where people who don't know anything know that they don't know anything but as they gain a little bit of information they overestimate how much of a particular topic they understand and they get to a stage where actually they believe that they are almost expert level and they certainly come across as well as much more confident than even people who know an awful lot more about them. The Dunning-Kruger effect then explains that as they get to know a little bit more if they ever get over this hump is actually they realize oh my god there is so much that I don't know and their confidence level absolutely plummets and then only very slowly does it increase as they learn more and they become true experts. So the Dunning-Kruger effect, very real. You're gonna come across it all the time, although it may not be completely apparent on first glance. And then probably the next most common issue is uh, something called cherry picking. And this is where we have an inherent belief that something is good or that something is bad. And we actively search for information that actually agrees with our pre-existing belief. Um, but, we, but we then ignore everything else that may contradict that or challenge that thought process. Ultimately, you can absolutely find anything online. You can support any particular view with a, the right Google search online. You can, you, can, you can find information that will really agree with your belief that the earth is flat. And if that is what you're trying to prove, you will come up with all of this you know, all of this evidence in inverted commas, and you will say that you've done your research, but really what you're doing is cherry picking, which isn't an accurate representation of our knowledge to date. And just quickly, if you want to know more about these common pitfalls, then I've got a free download in my resource center, which is actually linked in the description. It's got a whole load of other really important and actionable information that you can download for free. So check out that link down in the description. And so really, I guess the bottom line is that anecdote is not evidence. So anecdote is when you're reading about what happened to a particular individual. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's any malicious intent necessarily behind this you know we we are naturally programmed to look for patterns uh, and we're, we're, we're naturally programmed to really pay a lot of attention to stories but our stories or my stories just as much as anybody else's of my experience they're all subject to all of the errors that I've just discussed and many more besides and this is why anecdote is at the very bottom of the evidence pyramid if we can even call it evidence at all what anecdote does do is if we're getting a lot of the same stories, it does provide a, a base for where we should start to look further in our investigations to try and provide some higher level scientific evidence to either support that hypothesis or to refute it. Ideally, we'd be making all our decisions based on what we would call double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. Unfortunately, these kinds of studies, they're often not available for the specific problem or the situation that we find ourselves up against, especially in our pets. You know, there's a lot more information in the human medical field, but even then, there are big gaps in our knowledge. And, 
you know, understandably, as a result, we fall into the trap of searching for our own miracle cures on Facebook forums, trying to find the, the, the magic treatment that no one is talking about. And however well-meaning, they are all too often based on flawed information, assumptions or attribution. And as for why my patient was cured of their cancer, well, the reality is, is that we're never going to know, but, but my belief, whatever that's worth, is that the surgical procedure it triggered the body's immune system to really kick into action. And the immune system was then able to destroy all of the cancer cells that I know were left behind. Then again, maybe it really was a miracle. But look, I get it. Um, it can be a real struggle to know what to do to best care for your pet, especially if you're coming into challenging situations. And this video will help you avoid the 10 most common mistakes that I see pet owners make every day in the veterinary clinic. So tap on that video. I'll see you over there. But until then, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.